Hello, everyone. This is Byron King with Investor Intel. And boy, do I have a treat for you right now. We, we, have, we have Pierre Gautier of Oxico Resources, uh, a rare earth development uh, play that it is working with the mineral sand um, uh, products in uh, South America and in Africa, uh, you know, Colombia, Brazil, uh, the Congo, other places, got a bunch of relationships. Uh, you know, you, you you hear a lot about, oh, rare earth company, this rare earth company, that. These guys have just broken some incredible news uh, that I was stunned when I heard it. And Pierre, would you tell us, please, about your ultrasound patent that you just received from the United States Patent uh, and Trademark Office on uh, on on on, on uh, reducing mineral sands into, into something very, very important? Tell us about it. Yeah, my pleasure, because that's a really a, a pet project of mine uh, over the last five years. But, um, you know, it's uh, no different than when you go to the hospital for a kidney stone and they use ultrasound to break down that stone so it can exit your body. You know, so if you think of that process and you apply it to mining, what do we do in mining? We take the rock, we crush it, we put it into solution, into tanks, we put some, some acid in there. The acid is meant to uh, collect what you're seeking in terms of a mineral and detach it from the host rock. Mm -hmm. And that, that can take 24 hours in terms of cyanide. It can take 10 hours for nickel, uh, rares, et cetera. It's a very time-consuming thing for the acid to do its work. When you put an ultrasound in there, it creates these cavitation bubbles that collide together and they destroy the particles into nanoparticles. So the result of that process is that your acid has a much more, much more surface contact area to collect what it is, what mineral you're seeking to collect. So... Mm -hmm. You know, in nickel, we've done it in 15 minutes, 97% rec recovery compared to HPAL, which could be eight hours mm -hmm. and so on. You know, so, so I think it's a, it's a great contribution to the mining industry. And uh, we started early in this about five years ago. And um, now there's, a, we, you know, we work with the University of Montreal that has a sonification department, rare, very rare in North America, but there's 30 PhDs in sonochemistry working there. And we work with McGill University. So we have a scientific group that's on this all the time and we got our first patent from the u.s government last week so it's it's good stuff well that's it that's totally exciting i i think the last time we spoke i actually showed you this little this crystal of monazite here this yeah. is a beautiful crystal it's about the size of my thumb a little bit bigger actually yeah. uh this is not what you find in nature usually this, you, you'd pay 300 bucks for this at the tucson gem and mineral show so we're not going to toss this into the crusher but the yeah. idea is that you take monazite Yep. And you break it down, but now with your ultrasound, you're literally turning it to a powder and, and, and increasing the surface yep. area, which increases the efficiency of processing. And you, so you save chemicals, you save energy as in heat, yes. uh, you speed it all up, the kinetics of the reaction. And this is just a remarkable development. And I really congratulate you on that. Thank that you. was sort of my personal, you know, like, wow, <laughs> moment here. For, yeah. for the for p viewers and listeners out there who are watching this, uh, tell tell us what's going else is going on with Oxico. You're actually selling something, aren't you? You're one of these. Yeah. You, you have a cash register. Tell us about your cash register. Well, you know, monazite ores typically have radioactivity in there, a lot of thorium and so on, and that that mm -hmm. you know, it's, but it's a big source of rare earth on, on the planet. And uh, oddly enough, there's a lot of uh, tin historical operations that have monazite sands that are sitting there in tailings and so on. But the radioactivity has stopped that development uh, pretty significantly because you can't move that, that, those concentrates outside of a border. They can't travel mm -hmm. with international norms of radioactivity. So uh, one of the things we've just done is uh, done an ultrasound treatment, put everything in solution and precipitated out the thorium and created a, a concentrate of errors with no radioactivity. And so that liberates some of these big deposits mm -hmm. like in Brazil or Colombia that do have radioactivity that can now be sold under long-term contracts because that was the impediment to that kind of development. In the Congo, we're really fortunate is that we have a, a monazite sand deposit there with no radioactivity, <laughs> so, which is, which is contrary. Everything you read is, is usually, all of them are radioactive. So we've been able to start exporting 50% plus uh, rares from the Congo. And we had our first shipment about a month ago, 100 tons, and that'll be 150 tons this month. And we're going to build that to about 1,000 tons a month. So that puts us in a different conversation with uh, potential buyers, governments, car manufacturers, and so on. The fact that, yeah, would you like 1,000 tons? We'll deliver it in 60 days, you know? So we're looking to enter into long-term contracts with either governments 
uh, or uh, or automakers for that matter. You know, so, so so real so so that's just two home runs in one discussion here. You you've okay. you've managed to uh, break the code on on just the reaction kinetics of turning yes. you know turning your mineral into a concentrate, and now you're able to remove the thorium. I hold in my hand a vial of thorium oxide. Uh, very very low level radioactivity. I'm, you know, but you know I can I can hold it as a civilian, yeah. but it's like you know. If I, try, if I had too much of this stuff, I'd be in trouble. Uh, yeah. But so, so that's just that's just a, an astonishing uh, leap. Uh, tell tell us where where all do you work? We mentioned Colombia, Brazil, Congo. Yeah, what, what yeah. Else? So their main projects are, are are yeah actually Bolivia as well. You know Bolivia Bolivia mm -hmm. has a big history of tin mining there with huge amounts of tailings and so on. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at, we're looking at, at sources of rares mm -hmm. there as well. And uh, when you hit these monazite sands, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of them. Our Brazilian project, there's 30 million tons of tailings in, in the deal we're working on now. And uh, it was all studied by the German government and the Brazilian government. They did a massive study on this, it took several years on, you know, on the, on the economics of, of these uh, tailings deposits. And there's, there's tin in there, there's tantalum, niobium, and uh, so there's and zirconium. So there's a way of concentrating all these things out individually to create a revenue stream. And when they did this in 2018, they just stopped at, at, at the rarest. They took the rarest were like three percent approximately of the tailings volume. So on 30 million tons, that's still 900,000 tons. There's those, those are their numbers, not mine. And then they converted that into a rarest concentrate of about 38 percent total rarest with radioactivity. So they, they just stopped there and didn't go any further. So in our case, we did ultrasound on that one hour and got the uh, thorium out, precipitated everything out. So now we have this non-radioactive concentrate and there's a million tons of it. So I would think that some government or some car manufacturer might be interested in that. So it's, is, it, it's, is it fair to say that you're not really a mining company in the sense that you're buying sand, you know, tailings and sand that are already there. You're not digging a hole in the ground, are you? No, we, are, we, no, we, we do own the mineral rights to this because, you know, in, in many cases, right, we want to own the mineral rights because, because of the in-situ value of the asset, for mm -hmm. sure. You know? So, uh, yeah, so in Colombia, we have the mineral rights to, to, to uh, 1,500 hectares of alluvial plains in there that, uh, mm -hmm. that are very interesting. And uh, in the Congo, our joint venture partner company, Central American Nickel, which, which I also founded, uh, owns a mining concession, a joint venture with the government there for 25 years. So we want to we want to own the asset and have a majority interest in owning that asset just to be able to develop it on our own terms. You know? Oh, OK. Yeah. All right. I want to just try to clarify that in a previous discussion, we had talked about Bolivia and we talked about the tin mining. Yeah. And apparently in the olden days, you know, they 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 processed the sands for the tin, but they left everything else there. And there you are. You know what? Think of it. They're they're helping us by eliminating the tin and and, and increasing the value of the rare earths, mm -hmm. and uh, that has happened not only in Bolivia but <clears throat> in the Congo. The property we have was an old tin mine, mm -hmm. so again the tailings from the tin operation have been uh, enhanced in value by the removal of the tin. Uh, in Colombia, we have a lot of tin there on the ground as well. So, so there is an association with uh, with tin and, and monazite sands and rare earths uh, and what we see there. So these are important new uh, and very, uh, very large sources of rare earths to be exploited, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, if, uh, if people hear these stories and get excited and want to go out and, you know, buy into Oxico, how, how would they do that? What's your, uh, what's your share structure and what, what exchanges should they? Well, we're, on the we're on the Canadian Stock Exchange right now. Uh, there's about uh, 66 million shares out. The market cap's about 50 million bucks. Mm -hmm. and, and that uh, pales by comparison to most other uh, companies in the rare earth field. So we're a, sort of a new entrant in rare earths, not that known uh, yet. Uh, although there's a press release that came out this morning that I'd just like to point everybody's attention to. Uh, in Colombia, we've been working for rare earths that are about three to five meters uh, in these sands down in the ground and concentrating them. And then we have this iron cap formation in the first meter, and we just found in the iron cap that uh, there's about nine grams of gold there and about 12, 13 grams of platinum right there uh, in the first meter from surface. And we can project out this iron cap within our 1500 hectares and, and there'd be about 150 hectares of that material right on surface. So, so this ends up, this has the potential to be a, a major uh, gold uh, producer along with platinum uh, when you have open pit at, at that kind of level. So if you put it in that context, uh, we would be mining 
rare earth under there for free uh, and uh, the, the gold and the platinum would cover the, the extraction cost of everything else. Well, I, it, you know, all good things come to an end, including this interview. And this has been a fabulous interview, Pierre. Thank you so much. I personally thank you. Uh, I hope that the viewers and the listeners out there, I hope they thank you. And months from now, you know, after they've bought some shares and things are really uh, developing, I, you know, I, I think the market's going to be thanking, thanking us in other ways. But uh, thank you so much uh, for your time and for your courtesy. And we wish you well and your company and everyone with whom you interact uh, in these, uh, in the, in these uh, exciting mining areas. So, uh, you know, best wishes to you and everyone. Yeah, thank you, Brian. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.